Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Off the Shelf. Today we are going to be talking about fairy tale retellings. Try saying that five times fast. There are lots of fairy tale retellings out there. Um, there's also lots of stories based on mythology and folklore. So it's not just fairy tales. I've stuck pretty much to fairy tales here, but there is lots more out there. So if this is an area that interests you, definitely take a look and see what else is available. We're going to start out with, see if I can get that good there for you without too much of a glare, An Offer from a Gentleman by Julia Quinn. This is a Cinderella retelling and it is the third book in the Bridgerton series. So if you've watched the show, uh, if you're interested in reading the books, this one is number three. It is about Sophie Beckett, who is the daughter of an Earl, but her stepmother has made her work as a maid. And she somehow manages to go to a ball and meets Benedict Bridgerton. And she, you know, immediately is head over heels for him. He can't stop thinking about her. But where is she? Where did she go? Why is this maid so familiar? Because that's her, right? It's Cinderella. So if you are interested in some Bridgerton action, um, if you like Cinderella stories, definitely check this one out. It's available on Hoopla. Then I have Sea Witch by Sarah Henning. And this is a Little Mermaid retelling. Um, this is more of an origin story of the Sea Witch in the Disney version, that's Ursula. And um, it focuses on Evie and her friend Anna, who drowned when they were little. And Evie is convinced that Anna did not actually die. And then a girl shows up who bears a striking resemblance to her friend. So now she's even more convinced. This is Anna, come back. She doesn't know why she claims she's not Anna. She doesn't know anything about that. Um, there's something afoot here, right? So Evie's determined to find out what these secrets are, what's going on, and in the middle of all of that, there's also a prince. Of course, there's a prince. So if you're interested in a retelling of um, how the sea witch came to be the sea witch, definitely check this one out. And the girls at the Kingfisher Club by Genevieve Valentine. This is a retelling of 12 Dancing Princesses, which is a story that I think is less familiar to a lot of us. But in this particular one, it's set in the 1920s, and Joe and all of her other sisters, all 12 of them, sneak out of their house every night to go to the speakeasies and dance. And um, they do this under their father's nose. He doesn't know what's going on. And then he decides he's going to marry off all 12 of his daughters, which good luck to him. Um, so they are, they're trying to figure out how to handle this while well, Joe is. All the others are like, we're just going to dance. Dancing's great. And then they get caught up in a raid at one of the speakeasies. And she, Joe comes face to face with a smuggler that she hasn't seen in a really long time. And so there's, there's some sparks there. Um, if you want to know more about that, check out the girls at the Kingfisher Club. This one isn't exactly a fairy tale, but I kind of think that Alice in Wonderland falls into that realm of fairy tale stories, so we're going to go with it. Uh, this is After Alice by Gregory Maguire. Gregory Maguire writes a lot of books that are retellings and takes on other stories. Um, he wrote Wicked, which is the story of the Wicked Witch of the West and became a very well-known musical. That's him. Uh, this is After Alice, which follows Ada, Alice's friend, who is very briefly mentioned in Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. She's going to visit her friend Alice and comes just a little bit too late and misses her, but ends up falling down the rabbit hole herself. So she gets stuck in Wonderland trying to find Alice, trying to get them both back to their own world. So this is After Alice. Then we have Boy Snow Bird by Helen Oyeyemi. Uh, and this is a Snow White story. 
and um, a woman named Boy, she turns 20, she decides she's going to start over, start a brand new life. She gets on a bus, rides as far as it'll go, gets off, and is like, this is it, this is where I'm going to start my life, and meets a man named Snow. No. No. The daughter's name is Snow. She meets a man, his daughter's name is Snow. Ugh. It's hard to keep straight with the names that, like, that's not what I named my kids sort of thing. Um, but they end up getting married, and they create this idyllic image um, for her and everyone else. And then she has a child named Bird, and that image falls apart. And um, Boy is forced to reevaluate everything that she thinks she knows about her life and the people that are in it. So, if you're interested in a Snow White retelling, definitely give this one a chance. Then I have Dark and Deepest Red by Anna Marie McLemore, which is a story of the red shoes. This is another one that's a little bit less familiar, unless you're a ballet person, maybe. Maybe you're familiar with it from the, the ballet. Um, but, Basically, this one, original, the initial story, there's an initial story and then you fast forward in time. The initial story in 1518, uh, a bunch of women in the town start to dance uncontrollably and many of them dance until they drop down dead. And one family is blamed for this. But they don't know why it's happening, but this family ends up being blamed for it. There's rumors of witchcraft and, and all of this. And then 500 years later, a pair of red shoes fuse themselves to a woman's feet and make her dance, and she cannot stop dancing. Um, and they draw her towards this, this boy whose family were the ones who were blamed for the initial outbreak of this dancing fever, maybe you'd say. Um, so he knows more about this than pretty much anybody else. But now it's up to him to figure out the truth so that he can save the woman and not, you know, have her dance herself to death. So if that sounds interesting, check this one out. This is The Fourth Bear by Jasper Ford. And um, this one's a mystery. It's part of the nursery crime series. I think this is book number three in that series. Um, but you know, they're kind of standalones. And Jack Spratt and Mary Mary are, um, they have been detectives. They've been bumped down to missing persons. They're working missing persons now instead because um, some poor judgment in a previous case. But now the gingerbread man, who is a psychopath and a sadist and a killer, he's on the loose. So instead of tracking him down, they're supposed to be tracking down missing persons and they are desperate to be able to help with the gingerbread man case. But then Goldie, Henrietta uh, Goldie Hatchet, who's a star reporter for the Daily Mole, turns up missing. So now is their chance to figure out what is going on, what happened to Goldie, why um, is the porridge at the Three Bears house all different temperatures, even though they were all served at the same time, what's going on in the family dynamics of the bears, is there a fourth bear? There's a lot going on in this story, and it's all kind of over the top, but it's amazing. So if you're interested in um, mysteries, with storybook settings and storybook characters, I definitely recommend checking this one out. Oh. Then we have Bitter Greens by Kate Forsythe, which is a Rapunzel retelling. And um, it is the story of a novelist who gets banned from Louis XIV's court at Versailles for too many scandalous love affairs. So she ends up um, at a convent, and one of the sisters at the convent tells her this story of Selena Leonelli, 
who was the um, muse of this great artist and a little girl named Marguerite. And Marguerite's father went into Selena's garden, stole a handful of parsley, and then when he was caught, he basically sold his daughter to Selena for that handful of parsley. So she, the daughter Marguerite gets locked up in the tower, and this is her story in the tower in Venice in the 1500s. Definitely sounds, sounds interesting. And this is Beauty and the Clockwork Beast by Nancy Campbell Allen. Obviously, based on the title, it's pretty clear this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but it's a steampunk Beauty and the Beast retelling. So there's clockwork situations going on. There are rumors of vampires and werewolves stalking the countryside. And um, Lucy Pickett, the main character, goes to stay with her cousin and her new husband in their house because her cousin has been unwell and she wants to help kind of nurse her back to health. But when she gets there, there's a lot that doesn't add up in this house. And the, um, the brother of the cousin's husband is the owner of the house and his own young wife and sister had died from a mysterious illness and no one wants to talk about it. No one wants to figure out what happened. There's something funky with him. Like he, he's hiding things and she's determined to find out what it is. And of course then they fall in love because it's a romance. But if you like Beauty and the Beast, if you're there for some steampunk, this one's an awesome one to check out. And I have all the Ever Afters by Danielle Teller, which is Cinderella's stepmother's story. So Cinderella is the toast of the town. She and the prince have just gotten married and the stepmother feels like everybody's missing an important part of this story. So she sets out to set the record straight and tells her own story. And this is that story. Um, she did not lead a charmed life. She was a peasant and worked very, very hard and came to the um, Cinderella's father's house as a nurse for her. And she cares for Cinderella, well, Ella. She cares for her, but I, I think there's, there's a difference from openly loving someone and caring for someone and kind of holding yourself back. And that's what's happening here. So even once she becomes her stepmother, she's setting herself apart from her so it's it's not the you know evil stepmother story that we expect from from cinderella um it's much more tender i guess is the word and so if you're looking for a more complex backstory for cinderella's stepmother and why she has behaved the way that she has check this one out. I have two more for you. I've got a little Red Riding Hood one, Red Hood by Elena K. Arnold. And this one is set in Seattle. Um, a 16 year old girl, um, I believe she's 16. I might've just made that up. She's a teenager, whatever. Um, but she lives with her grandmother. And on the night of homecoming, she finds herself running through the woods, being chased by a wolf. And with, all, with this wolf attack, all of these questions come up about her past and wolves in general and, and, you know, it's Red Riding Hood. So if that sounds interesting to you, set in a more modern day YA setting, definitely give this one a shot. And then last, I have Unbury Carol by Josh Mailerman, which is a Sleeping Beauty story. And this one is a little bit more of a horror uh, retelling. And it is based, it focuses on a woman named Carol Evers. And she has a secret that she dies over and over again. 
she doesn't really die. She falls into a death-like coma for several days, but she's completely aware of what's going on around her while she's incapacitated, which sounds horrifying. Um, but this is a pretty well-kept secret. The problem is her husband, who married her for her money, knows it, and um, her, her past lover knows it. So her husband decides this is it, this time around, he's going to actually get her fortune for himself. So when she falls into this coma, he has her declared dead and buries her alive. Now it's all his. The lover hears about this, though, and rushes off to try to save her. Meanwhile, she's been buried alive and is completely aware of the fact that she's in the ground. So I, that, like, is giving me nightmares just thinking about it. Um, so there's a whole battle between, you know, everybody, and, and you have to see how it turns out. But if you're up for some nightmare sleeping beauty, this one is for you. So like I said, that is just a handful of the many, many, many retellings and, um, alternate takes and origin stories and that sort of thing that you can find for myths and um, fairy tales and folk stories and, and everything like that. So if that is something that interests you, definitely take a look. Come talk to us. We can give you some more pointers on, on things to look for, some more recommendations. If you're looking for other recommendations, you can also go to the website, eastonpl.org, and fill out a personalized recommendation request form. Give us a little bit of information about what it is that you like, what you're looking for, and we're going to give you back a handful of things that we think you'll enjoy. Hopefully, you're finding something good to read right now. Hopefully, you're following along with our 2021 EA PL, PL Reading Challenge and you're enjoying your springtime. So until next time, happy reading.